Hello and welcome to Docker series part 5. In this tutorial, I want to give you an overview or introduction to Docker volumes. So this is a really important concept to understand when using Docker, and it's something that you'll no doubt want to use when you understand what volumes are for. So in this tutorial, I'm going to just cover the reason or need to utilize volumes, the type of volumes that we have available in Docker, and just give you some basic commands. We finish off with an example of utilizing volumes in a Docker Compose file. And then in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and actually apply these commands uh, in Compose to actually have a look to see this in action. As the Docker documentation describes volumes, volumes are the preferred mechanism for persisting data generated by and used by Docker containers. So let's just bake that down. Simply put, volumes is just a folder location that's designated where data can be stored permanently for use within one or more containers. So Docker in Docker, we can create a volume. We can then attach that volume, that folder to a container. When we save data in the container, or for example, we have a database container. When we save data in that database, we can then save it to the volume. So the volume again is stored on the host machine. So that means that when we destroy the container and maybe we spin up the container again, we can still utilize the data that was created from the first container. So the simple example here is that we have this, like I said, a database container. So if we were to go ahead and utilize this container without maybe connecting a volume to it, Generally, what would happen is that this database would store all the data in its virtual file system within the container. As soon as we were to remove or delete the container, the data would be destroyed. Let's remember that containers are generated from images. So images are static. We cannot change them or we cannot edit the image from the container. So once a container is destroyed, the data then is also destroyed. So although I've given you an example here of a database here, the reality is that anything we have in, a car, in our container that requires to save data in a stateful way, so stateful meaning uh, the computer or program keeps track of the state or interaction. So the database keeps track of the, the data. So we interact with the database in that we store and update data in the database. So a stateful service or software. So the general application here of a volume is that we can create a volume. So for example, down here, we created a volume on the host. Now what we can do is we can link, plug in or mount that volume onto the container. Generally, what that means is that this container has a link between the container and the folder on the host machine. We can utilize the data or we can save the data within the container and that would, that would then update the host. And then if we were to save data on the host in the folder, that would also update what's in the container. Of course, when we destroy the container, the mounted folder here and the data resides on the host. So we don't destroy that data. Therefore, when we return or we spin up this container again, we can then go ahead and link that data that's on the host back to the container. And therefore we can return back to the previous state. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please leave a comment in the comments section if you've got any questions. Here we're just talking about a volume, which is a folder that we store on the host or and then we can connect to our container and start to save data in a persistent way so that when we destroy the container, we can then spin up another container, say, and then connect it to that volume again, which is the folder that, where we stored the data originally from the original container that we've just destroyed. Okay, so Docker volumes then. So it, we don't necessarily have to store the data or create our volume, sorry, on the host. Maybe we use remote hosts, for example, or cloud providers of some sort. Now, why you might want to do that, for example, is if we just go back here 
let's just think about some of the benefits that this is going to offer. Because if we're storing the data on the host, but obviously we're connected, connecting it to the container, we provide some flexibility here because this container that we made here in the host, sorry, this uh, volume that we've made here in the host that we've connected to our container, this volume here can be utilized on multiple containers and that can have some benefit in certain projects. So in addition to thinking about where to actually store your data, maybe on the remote host or cloud providers, or simply just on the server where you're running the container, Docker also provides the ability to provide encryption to your data. So the key here though, is that your data or your volume lives outside of the container. So we can think of three different types of volumes in Docker, a host volume, anonymous volume, and named volume. General case is that we utilize named volumes in Docker. So let's just have a look at some of these different options. So between the three different types of volumes, there are some subtle differences. So the host volume, so this lives on the Docker host file system or anywhere you want to place it. Like I said before, we could have it on a remote host or cloud provider. So like all the volume types here, they're all accessible from within the container. Now to set up a host volume, here really is the, the key in which, uh, which makes it different from other types of volumes. We specify not only the path to the location where the, can, where the volume is going to be held on the host, we also specify where it's going to be in the container. You'll notice some other common commands here. So for example, docker run, and then we use the V flag here for volume to actually create this volume. So I would suggest using a host volume when you need to know where to refer to the data. So this will make it the easiest type of volume to use. So it is ideal for say simple projects. If we compare this to the anonymous volume, the location of the anonymous, anonymous volume is managed by Docker. So if you imagine you've got a anonymous volume, it means that it can be difficult to refer to that same volume uh, for future connectivity. You want to use it on a different container, for example. So the final option is the named volume. So here's, there's, there is a, a subtle difference here. Name volumes, volumes and anonymous volumes, they are similar in Docker in that Docker manages where they're located. However, with named volumes, as it suggests, the named volume can be referred to by specific name. So we can refer to it by specific name. So that makes it easier for us to actually then utilize it, say in multiple, for multiple containers. Looking at how we can create and manage volumes, here are four simple commands for that. So docker volume create and then new volume. That will allow you to create a new volume. Then we can go ahead and for example, list all the volumes that are currently being utilized within Docker. So using volume LS. And then we can go ahead and actually inspect a volume. And here we can see, for example, where it's attached. So docker volume inspect new vol in this case. And then we can go ahead and for example, in the Docker volume LS, we list all the volumes. So we can get the volume name and then we can use the RM command to actually remove. So the last command here, Docker volume RM for remove and then the volume you want to remove. So we are not going to go into the ins and outs of creating volumes in this tutorial, but let's just have a look at an example with Docker Compose. So here we have three different services. We will have a a web server running and we've got a Postgres database here and a Redis image or container. So here you'll notice in the database, um, I'm running this volume. So I've created a named volume. So I've given it a name and the location within the container. And then in order to kind of connect this all up at the end, I specify the volume on the same level of, as the service. So the increment, there's no increment there. And then I define the volume um, that I'm attaching to the container. As we previously described, we're not actually defining where on the host we're saving this volume. Docker is going to do that for us with the named volumes. So we specified where on the container, 
where the volume is going to be placed or connected to, sorry. And then we give it a name and then we use that name um, to create our volume and then connect it to our container. So here we're specifying essentially that we're going to create a new volume called PG Data 2. And here we're um, actually connecting it to our container. So this is just a simple example um, utilizing Docker Compose. So hopefully that's given you enough information about volumes. So now we can go ahead and apply this in the next tutorial. Just something to look into um, before I will probably create a tutorial on this volumes versus buy mounts. So the concepts here are fairly similar. Uh, so it'd be worth having a little read into the differences between volumes and buy mounts if you want to kind of go ahead and do that. So hopefully, like I said, we've given you enough information now just to give you a general overview of what volumes are and then potentially how to use them. So I get set out some simple commands and I've given you or I've shown you I've shown an example, sorry, of utilizing volumes in Docker Compose. So like I said, now we're going to go over in the next tutorial and actually apply that in Docker and see it in action.